out there. It is July 16th, also, Stephanie, known as National Personal Chef Day. Oh, nice. <laughs> yes. I, I wish I had one. <laughs> I know. We all do. Yes, definitely. <laughs> but yeah. what, a, what a nice day to celebrate. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, here locally, uh, it, it's warm again. Uh, mm -hmm. Yesterday, we didn't, you know, have the rain that we've, we've been having. But, I mean, it's still not yes. as bad as it has been in the past. No, definitely not. Definitely not. And Justin Horn, I know, is going to be uh, serving us up some uh, good news here, maybe, in the weather department. <laughs> well done. Well done. How many people have a personal chef, though? Like, yeah, exactly. Like it's a very Oprah, obscure that's thing. That's about it, right? Not, not in this room. <laughs> not not this us. Room. <laughs> I'd be eating a lot healthier if that were the case. Uh, we uh, do have quiet weather this morning. Yesterday was hot. We were in the upper 90s. We're going to be there again today. Uh, let's first start with a look at the satellite picture. And this is kind of a cool view here. We can actually check out the clouds at night. And we've got some clouds down there around Catula, Beeville, Corpus Christi, and this yellow color you see here represents where we're seeing just a little bit of fog. That's up around College Station, not seeing any fog here. So skies are still relatively clear. I think we'll get some morning clouds to fill in, at least briefly, here around San Antonio. 77 right now, southerly winds at 9 miles per hour. New Braunfels 74, Converse 77. It's another warm morning. By noontime, 89. And this afternoon, 98. Feels like 103 at our hottest point there around 4 o'clock. Here's the good news. I think this is our peak when we're talking temperatures because things are about to get better. We've got rain chances back in the forecast. We'll explain when and where. Plus, we're going to look back at history. we got another historical event that we got to talk about today. And it was a busy night across the Midwest yesterday. We had a derecho. We're going to explain what that means and show you where some of the damage occurred. All right, let's go over to RJ now. What? All right, yes, uh, traffic's looking pretty good out there just as we take a look at 281 and Winding Way. Traffic moving pretty good both directions there. Same situation here at 90 Nogalitos. The only thing that we're seeing actually is on 90 right now. The westbound lanes out there at Callahan Road saw a couple of construction crews out there a little while ago as they continue some of that work out there in those westbound lanes of 90. But you know what? Let's get the information right from the source. Alex Gomez, he is in drive cam for us early on this Tuesday morning. So let's go ahead and uh, check in with Alex and see how things are looking out there. Alex, are you with me? Can you hear me? Okay, no drive cam at this point yet. But yes, Alex is on the road right now for us and he will be checking things out as we make our way through our Tuesday morning when we're shot there of 37 right there at the Alamo Dome. Things looking pretty good out there, Stephanie. All right, I knew this morning San Antonio police are looking for a suspect who shot and killed a teenager on the city's southeast side overnight. So this happened just before midnight in the 3800 block of South Miniman, and that is not far from South Givers and Fair Avenue. Police say that the teenager was shot multiple times in the street in front of his house. SAPD says that neighbors then heard a car drive away after those gunshots. The teenager was pronounced dead at the scene. Donald J. Trump. Now that was former President Trump walking into the Republican National Convention last night. Now the party's official nominee, a bandage covering his right ear. It was Trump's first public appearance since the assassination attempt days ago. By his side, his newly named running mate, Ohio Senator J.D. Vance, a 39-year-old former Marine and venture capitalist, rose to national fame with a memoir, Hillbilly Elegy. Now, Vance was once a Trump critic, calling him America's Hitler. I don't hide from that. I was certainly skeptical of Donald Trump in 2016, but President Trump was a great president, and he changed my mind. I think he changed the minds of a lot of Americans. And last weekend's assassination attempt has become a rallying cry for many Republicans. Homeland Security Security Alejandro Mayorca says that an independent review of Saturday's shooting will start in just a few days. And sources confirm the shooter brought hundreds of rounds of ammunition in the days and weeks before that attack. Sources also say that on the day of the attack, he told his father that he wanted to go to the shooting range. All right, and with only four months until the presidential election, November, questions are coming up about the potential impact that this attempted assassination will have on this race. Or Avery Everett spoke to political science professors across San Antonio who all say both sides' campaign strategies are likely to shift. This is going to be an incredibly important election. <laughs> In the days after the attempted assassination of former President Donald Trump, campaigns for the presidential race are expected to change. 
Before Saturday, political science experts say the Biden and Trump campaigns focused on personality and qualities rather than their policy. But the attempted assassination has put a pause on these efforts. Because of what happened. Trinity University professor Juan Sepulveda says Trump's campaign is pushing his survival as a strategy to win votes. On former President Trump's side, their campaign they're going to go even deeper on the strength message. Well, both of them have. And that's why Professor Dr. Lydia Andrade at the University of the Incarnate Word says the Biden campaign has tough decisions ahead. If everything's been about personalities, when is it OK to attack the gentleman that just had an assassination attempt? That, that's a delicate one for the Biden campaign. There's no. With drastically different stances on what the American government should look like, this election is in the spotlight. Now, voter participation may hit a turning point. How could that influence voters in November? Oh, I think it's going to motivate a lot of voters. Is there a sympathy vote? Is there something that comes across that makes this notion of strength and an even deeper piece? And that's, that's going to be kind of one of the key questions moving forward. As campaigns could change, their proof of success will show up at the polls on November 5th. This week, the Republican National Convention also started. We have up-to-date details on what's happening there on KSAT.com. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. All right, and this story surfaced over the past couple of days or so with a local connection. While the son of UTSA head football coach Jeff Trailer was actually at that rally where pre former President Trump was shot. Jake Trailer is his name. He's a reporter for NBC and was covering that event for NBC News. And we've since learned that Jake actually dove in front of an ABC reporter, Rachel Scott, when that gunfire started. Coach Trailer issued a statement saying that that is just who Jake is. Coach Trailer went on to say in that statement, I'm very proud of what he did, but it doesn't surprise me in the least. My prayers continue to go out to everyone who was affected by this tragic event. Reminder, last night was just the first of four nights that ABC will broadcast the Republican National Convention. You can watch it live before the night beat starts tonight, tomorrow, and Thursday night starting at 9. And you can watch it right here on KSAT 12 or any of our streaming platforms. And it has been over a week since Hurricane Barrel caused millions of dollars of damages at homes here and businesses that lost power in the Houston area. And this morning, the main energy provider in that area, Centerpoint Energy, says that 129,000 other customers are actually still in the dark. Well, Centerpoint says 98% of its customers will have power back by the end of the day tomorrow. However, Centerpoint is now under local, state, and national scrutiny for the way it handled barrel before and after storm made landfall. Area hospitals saw a massive spike in heat-related illnesses. Governor Greg Abbott and Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick both spent time in Houston to survey the damage. The governor said the utility company's slow response to getting power back on is endangering lives. The lack of power provided by Centerpoint continues to compromise, li compromise lives here in the greater Houston Harris County area. So what now? Well, the governor's office has promised to hold Centerpoint Energy responsible for this so-called uh, GAFE. The state public utility commission will investigate why power restoration is taking so long. And Centerpoint Energy has until the end of the month to explain to state leaders how it will limit outages the next time a major storm hits Houston. Hey, how about a little bit of sports news? Well, no Stefan Castle for the Summer Spurs, and that means it's a chance for other guys to step up and show out, and that includes guard Jamari Bouye, who signed a deal with the Spurs back in March. So in two games in Vegas, he's averaging 26 and a half minutes, about 11 and a half points, and five assists per game. And Sunday night in the Spurs win against the Atlanta Hawks, Bouye hit a step back jumper, putting the Spurs up four with 35 seconds left. And then he found Demoy Hodge for an easy bucket that you just saw right there with 10 seconds left to help the Spurs get this win. Having the 25 year old on the roster and on the court in crunch time was music to the ears of his head coach. Unbelievable, unbelievable. As a, as a coach, there's nothing like that calming presence to have Jamari on the ball. You just put the ball in his hands. We didn't want to run anything special, just that high pick and roll for him and let him create for us, and it was it was great. Absolutely. I think the game is definitely slower for me. I think uh, I got a, a couple years on some of these guys, so I think just trying to play with my pace and show them, uh, show them the way a little bit is definitely something I'm trying to do. Meanwhile, from Cali to Vegas, Spurs second year guard, you see him right there. CD Sissoko is having a solid summer so far. He is young, strong, and a good defender and can run the offense if needed since he was actually a point guard growing up.
And the Spurs have at least three more games in Las Vegas, and these are the two that we know for sure as they continue play out there. That's going to be tonight against the Pelicans, and then Friday night they will take on the Philadelphia 76ers. So, yes, the Spurs doing pretty good out there in Vegas so yeah. far. Yeah, CD Sissoko, actually uh, big friends of Victor Wimayama, kind of they grew up together, so both of French nationalities. Yeah, <laughs> yes. friends there already. <laughs> yes, definitely, That's yeah. Good. I'm so, sure Victor's turning him on. From, oh, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we look forward to the season for sure. Time now, 510 and 77 degrees for now. Okay, Prime Day, yes. Amazon's big summer sale spectacular is now underway. Up next, we'll look at some of the most popular deals. 3,000 room resort and casino in Las Vegas known for its 40-foot volcano, dolphin habitat, the former home to Siegfried and Roy and their white tigers. It's wow. closing down. Why gamblers are flocking to the casino one last time. Going to miss that uh, hotel casino, the Mirage. A lot of good stuff out there as we take a look at live cam right now. And things looking pretty good out there, but again, we are starting to warm up and uh, it's expected to be another, one, another hot one out there. We'll check it with Justin here in just a little bit. Welcome back to Good Morning San Antonio on a Tuesday morning while Amazon's annual Prime Day is already underway. ABC's Rhiannon Alley looks at some of the most popular deals there and more in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, Amazon Prime Day is here. Millions of deals are available. Top picks include a shark robot vacuum for 250 bucks and a ring video doorbell for $50. Analysts say popular items are expected to sell out quickly. Prime Day runs through tomorrow. Tesla CEO Elon Musk has confirmed the company is delaying its robo-taxi rollout from August to a date in October. Musk says the extra time is needed to make an important design change to the front of the vehicle. Finally, YouTube Music is rolling out new AI features for premium users. They can create custom playlists by describing their music preferences and identify songs by humming, singing, or playing them. The new features will be available on both iOS and Android devices. Those are your Tech Bites. I'm Marie and Ali. Have a great day, everyone. Well, time now is 5.15 and 77 degrees for now. All right, we're going to take you outside with drive cam right now. Alex Gomez is on the road. Not only Alex, our newest reporter, Devin Karp, is also hanging out with him, checking out the roads of San Antonio right now. We'll go ahead and get a check-in with Devin here in just a bit. And then later on with Alex, you're hanging out with us on Good Morning San Antonio. I'm a bee, and I bumbled my way into your car. Buzz. <laughs> But this hive isn't big enough for the both of us. <laughs> Boo! <laughs> oh, wow, what a buzzkill. And if you don't have the right auto insurance coverage, paying for this could really sting. So get all state, save money, and be protected from mayhem, like me. To stay on top of my game, I need to keep up my energy. Cliff Bar is purposely crafted with 10 grams of protein and organic oats. Because the more good you put in, the more great you get out. Cliff, the most important ingredient is you. You are bountiful. Your skeleton can support two times your weight. It's in your nature to stand strong. Supplement your bones with high absorption magnesium. Nature's bounty. It's in your nature. Hi, welcome back. It is 518 and we hope you had a good week so far. Uh, we're going to have an interesting, you know, day on the roads, I think. Yeah, definitely. Already seeing a lot of construction out there and crews starting to clear some things up. That's good. And we'll check in the weather here just in just a little bit. But do want to give you an update here as we continue to look at 90 westbound right there at Leon Creek. And I've been watching these crews pick up some of these barrels and some of that construction equipment over the past five or 10 minutes or so. So let's go ahead and check in with drive cam right now. So we have a dynamic duo out there. Alex Gomez along with Devin Carp, our newest KSAT reporter. Devin's hanging out with Alex uh, this morning. Devin, how are things going out there? You know, things are going all right. So far, we're on 1604 right here, kind of near the uh, Bandera Road exit. But uh, yeah, we haven't seen too much traffic out here so far. A little bit of construction earlier. Roads appear to be clear. Again, gas prices right now, as far as Texas, according to AAA, sitting in the low $3 range for the San Antonio area. So seeming to do pretty good overall. But uh, yeah, roads are pretty clear out right now. Just, you know, make sure if you are going to pass, make sure to try to do it in the left lane so you're not blocking anybody up. But uh, yeah, things are going well out here on the road so far. 
All right, thank you very much, Devin, as he checks in with DriveCam. And of course, we will also hear from Alex Gomez here in just a little bit. So Devin, get, Devin's getting the tour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he interned at Trinity, so he's familiar with San Antonio. But He's familiar, familiar yeah. with the roadways. Mm -hmm. uh, that 1604 looked really quiet for a while. It and did. then finally, yeah. some, some another car. company. <laughs> you, know, yeah. you know what business I'm going to be in? Uh-oh. The construction <laughs> barrel business. Yeah. Uh, There's a lot of barrels in San Antonio right yes, now. Yes, <laughs> all over the Listen, city. I'm not complaining. It's progress. But, there <laughs> but is it's a everywhere. Lot of construction yeah. going on. Job security. Yes, yeah. it is. Job security. Uh, as we look at authority radar this morning, we've got some showers that are working out from the south and west, crossing in from Mexico. These are light, probably not putting down a lot of rain. This is high level moisture, but uh, we'll keep an eye on it. Some showers down here around Carrizo Springs, or just to the south of Carrizo Springs and south of Eagle Pass. We're not expecting any rain in San Antonio, at least not today. It is in the forecast down the line, but today is just going to be another hot, mostly sunny day. Right now, 77 in San Antonio, 74 in Bronfel, 77 in Converse. Here's a look at the forecast. Noontime, 89, mostly sunny at that point. And then this afternoon, 98, so about a degree warmer than yesterday. And that heat index is probably going to creep up to around 103 or so. It was high yesterday afternoon, uh, and today will be uh, no different. Uh, there are heat alerts, not for us, but as you get north into places like Little Rock, Memphis, that's where heat index values really get out of control. You're talking 105 plus up there. But there's a large portion of the country that's dealing with heat advisories and excessive heat warnings, even along the east coast. So the big cities, uh, New York, Philadelphia, Washington, Raleigh, Charleston, all places that will be dealing with some big time heat. Uh, yesterday, we had some big storms erupt over the Midwest. They started up here. And then this big line came through Chicago, Indianapolis, and this morning it's working its way towards St. Louis. But it's of importance because it created a ton of damage. Uh, these are the wind and tornado reports, and we call this a derecho event, meaning uh, it is over 100, uh, to over 240 miles long when you're talking about the damage. So it started up here northwest of Minneapolis, worked through Chicago, all the way down into parts of Ohio. Chicago had tornado sirens going off last night. Uh, yes, there was some damage with that. So that's uh, the kind of the big story up across the Midwest this morning. And as we look at the upper level winds, uh, they have an active pattern up there, but we're about to get into an active, somewhat active pattern ourselves. High pressure moves off to the west, opens up the door for some disturbances or outflow boundaries to work into Texas. This is Wednesday afternoon at five o'clock. We're still probably dry here, but there will be some storms just to our north. And then by Thursday, some of that energy starts to dive down into our neck of the woods and we get to bring rain chances up. So this is good. Uh, we even have some rain chances Friday and probably into the weekend and even into next week. Uh, this has been a fantastic July, quite honestly. So 98 today, 98 tomorrow. I'd say there's a very small chance of a shower north of San Antonio tomorrow afternoon and then a 30 percent chance of rain Thursday. We're bringing it down just a little bit Friday, Saturday, and then bump it back up Sunday and Monday. No complaints. I mean, no triple <laughs> yes. digits, no and, triple digits. Ra and rain we'll chances. Take it. I like and that. Send that's, me that's, any that's email. I know. <laughs> mad at the weather guy for not predicting rain. It's there. Yeah. Yes. It's there. Yeah. Well, everybody's no. happy with you right now. That's good. <laughs> we'll definitely take it. Plus, uh, it's not as bad as it is in uh, Las Vegas right now, so that's good news. Sweltering. Oh, yeah, sweltering out there because coming up in just a little bit, we're going to be talking about the Mirage. First of all, it is 523 right now, 77 degrees outside. That's right. Why gamblers are flocking to the Mirage in Las Vegas before the casino's final shutdown. All right, taking a look at our lottery numbers here for the pick three, we have three, nine, seven, and four. And then the daily four is two, seven, one, four, and six. Cash five, eight, 10, 15, 19, 20. Your Texas two step, 12, 19, 22, 30. Bonus ball, 12. And right. your Powerball numbers, yeah, 9, 31, 39, 40, 45, Powerball 23, Power Play 3. Good luck. Good morning. Welcome back. It's 527. Well, they're getting ready for our final roll of dice at one of Las Vegas' legendary casinos. The Mirage is closing this week, and ABC's Trevor Alt has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, the end of a Vegas era. The Mirage, a 3,000-room resort and casino known for its 40-foot volcano, a dolphin habitat, the former home to Siegfried and Roy and their white tigers, and even featured in Vegas Vacation. Blackjack is the only game where a smart player has a mathematical advantage over the house. 
This week, it's closing its doors for good. But before the final cards are dealt on Wednesday, fans are flocking in for one last shot at big money. We'll be having a giveaway. So that'll be giving away about, about $12,000 over nine drawings uh, from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. And just to create a little bit of excitement and being given away those last dollars here at the Mirage. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll be live outside the Mirage as this pillar of the Strip readies for its final roll of the dice. Ah! Your GMA First Look, I'm Trevor Alt, ABC News, Las Vegas. Wow. I don't remember the dolphins there. I've I, been to Mirage a few times, yeah. but I, that must have been like an 80s thing. I don't know. I don't remember. Jamie, you said dolphins were back there. <laughs> so I don't remember we were. It was about 15 years ago. Yes, yeah. so I, I don't know. <laughs> also, Siegfried and Roy, the Tiger. I know. Yeah. I never like got old to, school Vegas stuff. I know, but I never got to see the show. But of course, you know, I heard a lot about it growing yeah, up. And yeah. I know you did too. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Time now, 528 and 77 degrees for now. Well, we are in the middle of a hot San Antonio summer, and it's never a good time for ouch for your ac to go out well coming up we're going to tell you the one thing you can do now to make sure that you stay cool later on for the land of the free well baseball fans are talking about a different kind of pitch this wow. morning after a rough national anthem performance during last night's home run derby Hi, welcome back. It is 5:31. Um, yesterday, it you know it got hot again in the afternoon, mm -hmm. but just not as bad as it ha you know as it could have been for July. I guess it was a little sticky. Yeah, out there, sweaty. Yeah, you know I mowed the yard. It was hot. <laughs> it was hot. Um, but it is July, and yes. last July was just awful. We had highs in the 100 and 105, yeah. 107. So this is actually much better, and we've got some good news on the way. But one way to really kind of stay cool, I think, is to have a business in the front, party in the back. You know what I'm talking about. Okay. Uh, yes, totally. Let's, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, you totally cool. So off. this is this is uh, Avery Kuros, and he uh, he is in what the national haircut. mullet contest. <laughs> That's and awesome. uh, he wants people to vote for him. The thing is glorious. It is well done. It's a co contest. Oh, it that's is. so cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so go vote for Avery. I wonder how old Avery is. Because remember there was a young winner one year? Yes, I believe that's correct. Yeah. Um, and listen, that is... Uh, well sculpted. Yeah. I think you could rock that, Justin. Well, I, I think you could rock it. You need the cool shades. <laughs> well, the, the shades add to, to it. Yes. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, well, well, good done, luck. Avery. Yes, good luck to you. Uh, pollen count. Molds are low, 320. So this was an improvement. We had high mold counts basically for several days because of the rain. Uh, now these numbers have fallen. But we have some rain back in the forecast as we get later in the week. Not today, though. If you're planning out your day, know that it's going to be hot, as we just talked about. In fact, by 1 o'clock, we'll be at 92. We top out at 98. Heat index most certainly will be 100 plus. As I said earlier, we're going to look back at a anniversary that takes place on today. A Guadalupe River flood. We'll fill you in on that coming up in just a couple minutes. Back to RJ now. We got a flashing light. This is not a crash. No, definitely not crash related as they continue some of that construction work. Night has been uh, very busy for us uh, throughout the entire morning here as you start your Tuesday. Happy Tuesday to everyone out there. If you're about to step outside right now, taking a look at 90 westbound right there at Callahan. Uh, we have one main lane blocked off to the side there. It looks like we are still seeing some traffic go through on the left handed lane. Let's go ahead and check in with photojournalist Alex Gomez. Alex is hitting the roads for us. Alex, hopefully your ears aren't hurting after we played some of that national anthem a little bit earlier, but uh, how are things looking, my man, on the roads this morning? You know what? I heard the national anthem last night, and I couldn't believe it, but you know what? It is what it is. I mean, everyone has their own uh, rendition. So yeah. check this out, RJ. We have a full house and drive cam. We have our intern, Angelina, and of course, you know, GMSA new reporter, Devin, in the house. We're navigating the streets over here on the north side. So check this out. We just left 1604. We're coming down 281 south near Bitters. We're going to head downtown, go check things out there. But so far, we haven't seen too many issues. But hey, we're out here, RJ. We'll let you know where those slowdowns are at. Have a full house. Yeah, full house there along with the crew. So they are in good hands with Alex as he continues to check out the roadways for us on a Tuesday morning. Thanks, Alex. We're um, public officers acting in their in their uh, public capacity. So this information really belongs to the public. 
Well, it's been kept from the public for more than two years, and now we could get records from the Robb Elementary School shooting by the end of this month. Well, KSET is one of a dozen media organizations suing for their release. That's right. A judge ruled that two Uvalde agencies must turn them over, and our Daniela Ibarra spoke with an attorney on the case about what you can see and what's still tied up in the courts. 21 names and 21 crosses. For the last two years, the Uvalde victims' families and the public have fought to remember them. They've also pushed for answers about what happened at Robb Elementary School. Some of those answers could come as soon as July 28th. We think this is an important step towards uh, transparency and accountability. Reed Pillifant is an attorney with Haynes & Boone, a firm representing a dozen media organizations, including KSAT 12. And the public will get a chance to see an unvarnished look at um, at, at those records. This order from the judge on July 8th requires Uvalde CISD and the Uvalde County Sheriff's Office to turn over records tied to the Robb Elementary School shooting. That includes body camera footage, 911 calls, emails, and text messages. What it does is give a window into the actions of people that day, um, how schools are prepared or not prepared, um, how law enforcement af uh, officers acted or didn't act. Why is that so important? Because most of what we know right now has really been filtered through other agencies. We know what the Texas House has told us. We know what the U.S. Department of Justice has told us. But the public really hasn't had an opportunity to see many of these records for themselves. Two weeks ago, a grand jury indicted former UCISD police chief P. Arredondo and former officer Adrian Gonzalez. Both face multiple felony charges of abandoning slash endangering a child. Families of the victims and survivors hope to see more accountability. Do you think by releasing these records there might be more indictments coming? We don't think the release of these records will have a direct effect on the um, on the district attorney's decision. As soon as those records are released, journalists here at KSAT 12 are going to be pouring over them, and we're going to bring you the latest information. Danielle Ibarra, KSAT 12 News. Well, those county and school district records aren't the only ones we've been waiting for. KSAT and several other news organizations are still fighting to get documents from the Texas Department of Public Safety. DPS is asking a judge to keep its Uvalde record secret, which has delayed the release of those records and answers for the families of the 21 victims. Well, the local church building where 26 people lost their lives in a mass shooting is one step closer to being torn down. We are talking about the old First Baptist Church in Sutherland Springs, where a mass shooting took place almost seven years ago. Back in 2021, church members voted to demolish the property, but a recent lawsuit challenged that vote. A temporary restraining order was put in place to hold off on that demolition. But now a Wilson County judge decided not to extend it. Still, some people don't think that this is a done deal. Day wasn't a total loss. Our case is still alive for now and uh, we're gonna keep going. I have no hope in that building still be standing by next week. And case I tried speaking with attorneys for that church, but they would not comment to us. At this point, it's unclear when the building will get torn down. Well, a San Antonio police officer is on administrative leave after being arrested and charged with making a terroristic threat to his family. Eight-year department veteran Andrew Gonzalez was arrested after a report detailing that incident was filed with the Bear County Sheriff's Office. He is the third San Antonio police officer arrested so far this year. And cell phone camera footage shared with KSAT Investigate shows that a San Antonio police officer using his stun gun to subdue a suspect seen walking away from a stolen truck. Well, that man has been identified as 24-year-old Benjamin Aguirre. Oh, oh my God! Hey, 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 Now I get it, tells KSET investigates that he simply wanted to know why he was being detained and that the officer did not provide a reason. The San Antonio Police Department's master taser instructor walked us through when it's appropriate for officers to use their stun guns. When can we use a taser? When lesser means have failed to accomplish that arrest. So if I've already tried verbal and hands-on and that's not working, then our policy allows us to move up to the next force available, which would be intermediate weapons. Well, Case That Investigates takes you inside this chaotic scene that you just saw right there. That's tonight on The Night Beats.
Time now is 540 and 77 degrees for now. All right, yeah, definitely feeling some of the warmness, the heat out there. Well, it's tough to go through a San Antonio summer with good air conditioning in your home. Well, up next, we're gonna tell you what a local AC service says is the key to keeping your AC running strong during the next couple of months. Yeah, it's very important right now, now yeah. that things are warming up in the afternoon. Uh, right now, not too bad at all. 77 degrees, a great time to be outside if you can do any chores outside early this morning. We'll be right back. You can't have a good summer without a good AC in Texas. July and August are some of the busiest times for air conditioning repair companies. The good news is the temps have not reached over 100 degrees, so waiting times are not too long for service calls yet. We spoke with a technician who tells us how to avoid major problems. So a lot of the problems that we see most this time of year are gonna be the no cool calls. Uh, there's going to be thermostat problems, strange noises, strange smells, uh, poor airflow issues, and um, water leaks is, is another big one that we see. Jeremy Cox with John Wayne Service Company says the good news this summer is there's been no disruption to parts being available like last year. He says homeowners investing into a good all-inclusive service tune-up that might cost $70 to $100 is a good preventative way to avoid problems later this summer. Have someone that come to come out, check the system that knows what they're doing, look at it, look for worn parts, and replace those weaker worn parts before they turn into major repairs. Homeowners should also know how to do monthly preventative maintenance for their AC. He's going to walk us through that coming up at 6.30. And, you know, I looked up at the price of some of these mm -hmm. systems. It's a starting off at like $2,000 for the cheapest system. So investing yeah. into like an annual maintenance and making sure you stay on top of that is gonna prevent you from having to spend that much money to replace it. That would be worth it because when, you know, when it when it goes out, especially in the middle of the summer, yeah. you, you have brutal, to pay the yes. high dollar to get it fixed. <laughs> yeah. You're like, can I pay extra to get it in tomorrow? You yeah. know, it's just so uh, hot, especially and you have elderly and you have kids, mm -hmm. so it's very important. It sure is. Well, yeah, and to keep on top of it, not only for us, but like for our, our neighbors yes. or um, our family members as well. And even just a little bit of change in the temperature. The other day I had to have an AC tech go out there because uh, our temperature went up by just a couple of degrees and you could feel it. If yes. you were upstairs and I was like, oh, okay, it feels a little bit warm up in here. It's like, what's going on? Yeah, so definitely we were having a little bit of uh, ventilation issues. So we got fans. that taken care of, but yes. Fans, fans, fans. Yes. He said it makes a huge difference. Yeah. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we have ours always on. <laughs> Thank you, yeah, Patty. Yeah. <laughs> All right, time now is 546, and wow, already getting warm out there, 77 degrees outside. Yeah, slowly but surely. Hi, guys. <laughs> Looking out there with Drive Cam, we can see our team out there. We have uh, Alex and Devin and Angelina. She's waving at us right now, and they're going to give us an update on the roads very soon. All right, it's 549 right now. Give you a quick check on some of the roads here. And we're taking a look at some of that ongoing construction right there, 90 at Callahan. So we are seeing things kind of last a little bit longer than what we had hoped. Usually get that cleared out by the five o'clock or even closer to 530. But uh, see a couple of those crews out there. Hopefully they get that cleared out here in just a little bit. I-35 South Nogalito Street. That's going to be our other area. Where we're seeing a little bit of delays due to a stalled vehicle out there. But let's not delay going to the newest KSAT reporter here, the newest part of our GMSA team, Devin Carp. He's hanging out with Alex Gomez and also our intern back there, Angelina. See these guys cruising around the streets of San Antonio. Devin, how are things going out there, my man? Hey, so far conditions are doing great. We just got off of I-10 West, if you take a look here. No rain, roads are pretty dry. We're starting to see some stuff. Now we're heading to a potential scene downtown, so we're gonna get off the highways here pretty quick, see if we can check anything out. But. Uh, for the moment, it appears things are starting to turn out pretty well around San Antonio. Looks like all these morning commuters are going to have a good drive to wake up to. All right, that's good news. And also, uh, one of the good things about having drive cam out there is that we are able to go to different things that are going on throughout the city of San Antonio. We'll check yes. in with you guys here in just a bit, Devin. Yes, thanks for giving us mm -hmm. a look out there. And um, I didn't notice anyone with coffee. No. <laughs> oh, I'm sure Alex got here. I've I'm been in sure. drive cam. <laughs> yeah, Alex is uh, ready to go for sure. Yeah. I don't think Devin drinks coffee. We need to check with him. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he, he said well, he, he doesn't. Didn't, he didn't yesterday, and I was surprised. Yeah. He was okay. like wide awake. I'm like, wow. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, 
<laughs> fourth cup. Or, <laughs> so. I'm not a coffee guy either. So. No. It's a young guy. What well. can you say? You know, they, the had, youth uh, they had energy drinks on sale at uh, HEB the other day. So, so I stopped. That, oh, you did energy yeah, drinks. Energy yeah, energy drinks. They're, they're horrible for you. I openly admit that. But well, anyway. You know, got to do what you got to do. You got to do what you got to do. Let's go back to 1987, guys. It was on this day, July 16th, 1987. Actually, it was the night of July 16th, the morning of July 17th. If you remember this, uh, the Guadalupe River had a historic rise. They had a foot of rain near Hunt, and the Guadalupe River rose nearly 29 feet. And very sadly, the uh, bus carrying summer campers tried to cross the river. And if you remember this, uh, the kids had to get out, and the river rose almost immediately as they were getting out of the bus, and they had to be rescued by helicopter. And sadly, 10 lives were lost that day. It's one of the bigger tragedies uh, in the Hill Country uh, back in the 80s. Uh, this was a a really sad day and you know there was just a ton of rain that morning and the Guadalupe River rose so fast and this reminds us of the dangers of flash flooding here around South Texas. So just a flashback uh, to July 16th in 1987. A few of you might remember that event. Okay, let's talk about rain this morning. There's not much out there. Certainly not like we saw back then. Uh, just some light showers coming in from Mexico. We've seen a few of these Worked their way towards Carrizo Springs. They're all very, very, very light. We're not expecting any rain here in San Antonio uh, this morning. But as we look a little bit closer, yeah, you might see a few sprinkles there around Carrizo Springs. Uh, maybe Eagle Pass, although most of this is staying off to your south at this point. Let me show you the, the uh, visible satellite picture. and Not the visible, but at least uh, a satellite picture from uh, this morning. And we're starting to see a little bit of cloud cover starting to make its way into San Antonio. And these yellow colors you, you see here represent fog. So we may even see a little bit of patchy fog in spots, although we haven't seen a lot of that around San Antonio. So mainly just our morning clouds that we're used to, they break apart and then we'll get sun this afternoon. 77 right now in San Antonio, 74 in New Braunfels, 77 in Converse. The heat index today, well with a high of 98 and with humidity in place, it's gonna feel like 104. Yesterday we had a heat index just a little bit below that, but uh, it's, it's gonna be a hot stretch the next couple days. Good news here is we're going to get you some relief, and that occurs uh, starting Thursday, I think, uh, because we get a bit of a pattern change. High pressure's, for the most part, been in control, but it starts to scoop back to the west. That's not good news for Vegas, uh, but for us it is because we get these little disturbances that roll around this ridge of high pressure. A lot of times we can get outflow boundaries or weak fronts that works uh, south towards San Antonio, and that's exactly what I think is going to unfold on Thursday. And by Thursday, we get to raise our rain chances to 30%. It'll be isolated, widely scattered showers and storms. And we may even see one of those complexes of showers and storms develop. Something we need to watch Thursday. Uh, even going into Friday, we'll have some rain chances. So 30% Thursday, 20% Friday. And then rain chances over the weekend and into next week. So this July has been good to us. It looks like this wet and slightly below average weather will pick back up as we get into the weekend and next week. We'll be right back. Good morning. It's great to be with you. Coming up here on a Tuesday, the latest on the story we're all following. Donald Trump at the Republican National Convention in his first appearance since the assassination attempt. Side by side there with his new running mate, J.D. Vance. This morning, we'll look at Vance's path to the Republican ticket and get the latest on the investigation into the assassination attempt. We'll have our exclusive with the director of the Secret Service, plus President Biden back on the campaign trail. Also this morning, the new study on kids, screen time, and mental health. Dr. Darian Sutton is here with screen time versus green time and it's prime day so we've got some of the best deals out there Lori Bergamato going to bring you the strategies to save that and so much more on GMA all right we're moving along on a Tuesday morning ahead in our next hour at GMSA graduating high school seniors are getting a crash course in finance as they head to college or into the workforce we're going to tell you what they should be learning before they get to live on their own Plus, as this week definitely heats up, we're all feeling it out there. It's important to have working air conditioning at home. Patty Santos is back with part two of how you can keep your AC running smooth this summer. And up next, if you're looking to get outside, spend some time outdoors with the kiddos today. People living in Barrett County can save money at the San Antonio Zoo. We're going to tell you how in just a few moments. And we are checking out drive cam here on the south side of town off of Morrison. Uh, last check, Alex Gomez was heading to a scene out there along with our newest reporter, Devin Carp. We're going to go ahead and check in with them here in just a bit and see what this is all about.